Well, I can start, perhaps. I'm struck by the fact that uh, in Matthew's Gospel, the Lord's Prayer follows rather quickly on. Chapter 6 follows on chapter 4, where we read that the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the evil one. And I always remember as a high school student when I was converted and first found myself worshiping amongst the Dutch Reformed, uh, we always prayed the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And I think uh, we can debate the translation. It can kind of go either way. But uh, I, th I think our Lord is reminding us that he withstood the temptation for us, that he overcame the evil one, and that we pray that he will continue to preserve us so we don't face the temptation as he faced it, and that we would be delivered from the evil one to live for Christ. So I think that's at least part of what's going on at that prayer. Yeah, I would, um, and I do love the translation. I think actually it's a better translation. Uh, do not lead us into temptation, uh, but deliver us from the evil one because I think that's exactly where this is aiming, that we are reminded of Christ having endured for us uh, the temptation, uh, and, um, and therefore we are delivered through his faithfulness in, in all of life under the assault of the evil one. Um, but on the other hand, of course, uh, the whole notion of testing itself uh, is not something that's evil. On the contrary, God or uses testing, um, testing by, and, and then by the way, God sovereignly can even take that which the world, the flesh and the devil would use to ensnare us. He can use that in his sovereign hand to yet disciple us and develop us, but we are to flee temptation. Now, so I'll make two comments. Number one, Christians make a, I think a big mistake in this area in that we resist we resist temptation and flee Satan. And I think the Bible would have us do the opposite. The Bible does not want us to flee Satan. The Bible wants us to resist Satan, and he will flee from us. But that which is designed to ensnare us into sin, we are to flee that temptation and pursue the environment of holiness and the means of grace that build us up. Now, again, having said that, when God brings tests, they are not designed to ensnare us. What they are designed to do is edify us. A test from the divine hand does three things. It's kind of like my algebra teacher in the eighth grade. I was convinced she gave me tests to flunk me. Uh, but actually, um, and, and I've always told people, you never have to worry about prayer in school uh, as long as you got algebra test, you'll have prayer in school, I can promise you. But, um, um, but a test in the hand of the Almighty, uh, that is there to show us what we know, to show us what we don't know, and to show us what we need to know. And that is from the hand of the Lord. But we flee that which is designed by the world, the flesh, and the devil to uh, bring us down. I'll just say quickly on this, um, I think it is confusing for everyone when we hear that. I think part of the issue with the way it's translated into English and the way we understand that portion of the Lord's Prayer is that it's a bit of a he Hebraism. It's a, it's a way of speaking. It's a manner of getting a point across to say that when we are tempted, Lord, lead us away from it. Get us out of it help us to flee it. And so, I, I know that sounds like the opposite of what it's saying, but it's, a, it's, a, it's understanding the, the way in which the Hebrews thought and spoke. And we see those Hebraisms um, throughout the Gospels. And so, I think that's more so what it's getting at. 